Good morning, mana gathering people. It is Friday and who is excited? I am, I am. Um, I'll ask all of you to keep me in your prayers um, because I am flying out this morning for the first time, checked all the safety protocols and I feel um, safe as far as pandemic is concerned. Um, there's always a little anxiety um, about flying and being away from my kids. I'll get to that in a minute. I'm flying out to um, Los Angeles to help my best friend uh, move back home. Uh, she's been out there for 10 years and is coming home and uh, we will be driving across the country loaded down with all her stuff in a car and us two humans along with uh, uh, two cats trying to book it back across the country to the east coast because I am a little anxious about being away from all my four boys yes four boys but especially I am a little anxious about being away from that sweet one-year-old Obi who I have never been away from so let me flash up a little picture of my boys to show them off to you there they are Hiram Clyde is that redhead with, uh, he's five. Grady is the brown blondie on the left and he is three and there's my Obadiah in the more, uh, middle. Yep, his name is Obadiah. We call him Obi. He is one and he is just a sweet, sweet, sweet little baby. Love looking at him. Let me, oh. There he is by himself, my sweet Obi. So his name, Obadiah, that should tell you just how much I love this Old Testament book. I love the prophecy, the warning, the encouragement of Obadiah that he makes. And I love, I love the meaning of Obadiah. It means servant of the Lord. And I pray and I hope every single day that all three of my sons will truly grow up to be servants of the Lord. And I'm probably sure this has been a prayer and a hope for many mothers and fathers, parents, grandparents across the millennia since the beginning of time. Um, I am sure that included many Edomite mothers. They had the same hope and prayer for their children, their sons, their daughters, to be servants of the Lord. And yet in Obadiah, we hear that the majority of the Edomites got swept up in the grind and the grab for all things worldly, which of course led them away from being servants of the Lord, away from their families, away from their neighbors, to all kinds of ways and things. But let us again hear from Obadiah 1. Remember, there's only one chapter, verses 3 and 4. Hear these words of the servant of the Lord, who's a messenger for the Lord. Obadiah 1, 3 through 4. Your proud heart has deceived you. You that live in the clefts of the rock, whose dwelling is in the heights, you say in your heart, who will ever bring me down to the ground? Though you soar aloft like an eagle, though your nest is set among the stars, from there I will bring you down, says the Lord. So yesterday we talked about, um, we all need friends like Obadiah in our lives. Friends willing to speak sometimes the hard to hear truth with love, with grace, and the hopes of helping us to move forward towards God and away from self-destructive behaviors and self-destructive choices. But today, let me remind you that you just might be called to be an Obadiah in our world to your friends, to your family, and maybe to even the whole nation, the whole world. Actually, there are probably moments every day that you can be an Obadiah. 
I know that for me that there is there are these moments every day of course with my children and from time to time with my friends I have three sisters with my sisters and sometimes with my one brother and even yes sometimes with my husband I have to be an Obadiah he's my Obadiah I have a relationship however with all of these people I love all these people and so I come to them in love in grace wanting only the best for them i know how to meet them where they are with words that are gentle and words that are loving i'm not always so thoughtful or so tactful with my words if i'm honest but i really try to be when i feel called to be an obadiah to some one of these people in my inner circle my village my tribe whom i have built years of cultivating relationship with um i try to be loving and graceful and mindful of of them not to tear them down but to um, just point them back to god and point them back to themselves but there are also times when i'm i am to be uh really like obadiah from the bible obadiah wasn't from the kingdom of edom he was from judah i think i've told you that already and he traveled southward down to bring this message from god he does not have a relationship with these edomites only their ancestral connection is what binds them together so I imagine that it was especially not easy to hear from a person not of their nations, not of their uh, family, their kingdom. The Obadiah's message was especially hard for the Edomites to hear. But as hard as it was to hear, if you read Obadiah, he speaks or we have this written word that is beautiful and eloquent acknowledging their beautiful nation of red rocks and even acknowledging the place they have worked to become a place of of power and privilege for their people they have grown to be this great nation he acknowledges all that obadiah does but at the same time pointing out how all of that has gotten completely out of control and turned their priorities upside down and let everything go to their their heads Obadiah points out those things that the Edomite the Edomites would have been most proud of and he shows them how these supposedly good things have led them away from God it is easy to rush read through Obadiah and hear these words as very very condemning and hard and in some places they really are but in some places they are not he uses words that are eloquent gentle and beautiful I guess today we need to be reminded that when we are called to be an Obadiah to anyone, family or not, neighbor or not, world, big world, small world, that we use words that are gentle, that are loving, that are seeking to understand so that the words are the words that we need to say are heard and not completely rejected or fall on deaf ears. That's how conversing happens. That's civil discourse. And that's not always easy. But honey, as the saying goes, attracts more flies than vinegar. So remember through this, these, these verses of Obadiah, remember that honey, to use words, honey words, to use honey words, we'll just call them use honey words and not vinegar words when you are called to be an Obadiah. I will see you for the last time this week on Obadiah um, tomorrow, Saturday. See you then.